I have another cat that has been diagnosed with IBD. And I know we've talked in the past about the fact that IBD really isn't a diagnosis, but in traditional veterinary medicine, it is. It's basically a whole bunch of symptoms wrapped up together. And any one or more of these symptoms could be present in a cat or a dog who is diagnosed by traditional veterinary medicine with IBD or irritable bowel disease, even irritable bowel syndrome. There's nuanced difference. So my cat, Machida, I didn't even know there was anything wrong with him. He really didn't even have any symptoms, but his lab work showed that there were some issues. My vet who did the lab work actually thought maybe he was having liver issues. So we went and did an ultrasound and found that uh, the doctor that did the ultrasound said, no, nope, liver's all good, but there is definitely a lot of inflammation in the gut. I feel like he has IBD. All of that to say that he's not feeling well today, <laughs> which, you know, I had already previously intended to go back to this episode with the two crazy cat ladies talking about IBD and cats because it has been so incredibly popular. And this information, more and more people need it. And when I originally aired this interview, there weren't a whole lot of people. <laughs> I, I, I've got to be honest, there weren't a whole lot of people watching or listening to this podcast. So now that the listener base has grown so substantially, which thank you, by the way, because I love getting to do this and bringing these wonderful guests to you. I thought it was really important to go back to some of these topics that we discussed in previous episodes that really, you know, if you're not a binger like I am, because I, I find a podcast that I love and I binge it, but if that's not you, which I think that's probably not most people, then you may not have heard this episode and the information in it. I don't, even if you don't have a cat today, if you have a dog or you may have a cat in the future, this information is so important to know. So I'm just going to kind of run back into the episode. I clipped it a little bit, so it's not crazy long. Um, but the two crazy cat ladies and I discussed IVD and cats. I've been through it. They've been through it. They've helped so many people with it. And I... I just know this is going to be so beneficial for you. So I'm going to just go ahead and jump right into it. Here we go with the two crazy cat ladies. Yeah, so IBD or irritable bowel disease in cats is something that is more and more people are talking about because more and more people are getting this diagnosis from their veterinarians and they're seeing a lot of symptoms that from my experience and with personally and talking to other people um, and reading things online, preparing for today, it seems like it's, it's a quick, like anytime you get a cluster of symptoms, veterinarians are just like, it's IBD without even doing any testing or, or anything. So I think I would imagine you guys are very well versed at this point in IBD because of something we're going to talk about later. And I also want to give you a little like teaser because I have a, a surprise for you at the end. So um, <laughs> I want to know what what the average cat parent should know about IBD. So spill. <laughs> Well, you, you said it best just right off the bat is that it is a big blanket diagnosis. You know, there's a, so many people that are like, well, my cat has IBD or IBS or it's, it's something in the gut and it's, they're not necessarily trying to pinpoint what the root is or if it is a, something maybe a little more specific. So I think generally, yes, uh, I think that's a good starting spot for anybody is to recognize that there is more that you can do to kind of try to pinpoint what's going on. And it doesn't just need to be, oh, my cat has IBD and we're on a prescription diet for the rest of their life. And a lot of times, 
so many people that we talk with, they do the prescription diet, but they're constantly dealing with flare ups. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say if you get that diagnosis, what you need to know is that's not where it stops. Right. We have to we have to go in and heal the gut because really IBD is a lot like FLUTD in in cats where it's a bunch of like you said just a cluster of symptoms diagnosed as one word that is a cluster of symptoms. So IBD in itself is really just a symptom, right? I mean, and most of these things are, but it's really just a symptom of an imbalanced gut. Right. So we, what we have to do is really get to the root of these things instead of continually treating the symptoms with with crazy stuff like metronidazole and, you know, antibiotics and steroids. And um, so many vets just, you know, they, they it's just their go to medicines or a diet that is completely unhealthy and going to cause other issues down the road. Um in order to try to get symptoms under control, there's so many ways, natural ways that we can help our cats restore their gut. And that is the key to overcoming. And I truly believe there is a cure to IBD because if we, if we restore the gut and the gut is healthy, then we no longer have any of those cluster of symptoms. Yeah. I, well, I've been through this personally with two cats and I, I find that when I tell my story to people, they're like, that's exactly what I'm going through. Like, it's just the same thing over and over. Um, so basically, you know, I've had, I, I have my cat, right? And they're finicky eaters. They're, they're, be, they're becoming more and more picky about what they're eating. You may or may not realize that your cat isn't feeling well after they eat, right? Because they can be very... Um, they can Stoic. hide. Yes. <laughs> and they can hide when they don't feel well and literally hide. So you can't even see that they don't feel well. And, you know, you're having, you could have diarrhea or excess gas. There, there's so many different things going on that could be happening. For me, it was a lot of finicky eating to the point where like they're barely eating anything. It doesn't matter what I try. And you go into the vet, right? And they're like, well, we can, well, they start with the metronidazole, right? Which over a long period of time, which they want you to give it for a long period of time, it can have anti-inflammatory effect. But it's, it is an antibiotic and it, like, if you just go in and get it, it's an antibiotic. And then they can also, if that doesn't help things, they're going to give you a steroid, like a prednisolone, right? Um, Funny, funny thing, not funny, haha, -ha, but like the first cat that I went through this with, my vet tech accidentally filled my cat's prescription with prednisone instead of prednisolone, and cats can't metabolize prednisone, right? So like it wasn't doing anything. They were He was getting no effect. I was giving him these pills for a month before realizing I went in for the refill and I got it and I said, these pills don't look like the pills I just had. And then they realized they had filled my prescription wrong the first time. So anyway, that's just a side note. <laughs> so it's prednisolone that our cats will get, right? And th the whole idea is just management. Like they don't treat it. They just right. try to manage it. And then they'll tell you, we can do an x-ray. And then the x-ray isn't going to tell them anything generally. They might see that the gut lining is a little thicker than it should be, but and they might not. And then up from that, they're like, from here, all we can do is imaging. You'd have to actually go in for imaging at a special center where they do, an, you know, animal, small animal imaging, which, by the way, is like five, six, seven hundred dollars, right? right? Yeah. For that one image. <laughs> and then they're going to tell you the same thing, at least in my experience, they're going to say, yeah, the gut lining looks thick. It could be this. It could be that. We don't know unless we go in and do a biopsy. And at this point, who wants to do that with their cat? Right. I mean, really, you've at this point spent twelve, fifteen hundred dollars plus all the food that isn't getting eaten, plus all the medication, right? And your cat isn't getting any better from anything that you're doing. It's just, there's there's a better way, right? There's got to be a better way. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, when it comes, if, if you, and I'll say this right off the bat, if your cat has all of these symptoms and you're not fearing cancer, 
right? Because that is one thing that we would want all this testing with. We would would want to see if there's a tumor in the GI tract We would or in the intestines. We would want to see those things and catch them early. So the testing is is beneficial in certain ways. But if you're just like, it's just these symptoms, your cat is just having some diarrhea or vomiting or, or, you know, gas and all the other GI symptoms, then, um, then let's work to restore the gut from the beginning because the metronidazole, the, the any other antibiotics, the steroids they're they are actually making the problem worse over the long haul, right? So we're actually taking out the, the, the gut flora. We are destroying in, in many recent studies with metronidazole is showing that it's destroying our cat's ability to be able to properly digest certain proteins and sometimes all proteins. And it's irreversible in cats over after a certain amount of time that the, the studies are showing. So if we just from the get-go can focus on restoring the gut, then we can, you know, slowly over time, I mean, there are ways to do this a little bit quicker and we can talk about that too, but slowly over time, we can start to rebuild the gut. I will also say that we see this most often in shelter kitties, cats that have been, um, you know, rescued from the street. God bless the shelters. We absolutely love them. Um, but they've been rescued from the street and they are spayed and neutered at, you know, six weeks of age or three weeks of age. They are given a dewormer. They are um, given antibiotics for the, for the surgery. They uh, are vaccinated um, with, you know, many vaccines all before they're even six months of age. Right. And so that, so their gut hasn't even had a chance to, to develop completely before we're going in and destroying it with all of these other, all of these other things. So then at about one to two years of age, then you start to see some symptoms and as they age, it can get worse and worse. Um, and so it's, you know, it's very prevalent. I think, I think, I don't know, I don't have studies to show that, but I truly think that the, you know, shelter kitties are the ones that are the most um, commonly diagnosed with IBD because of, or IBS, um, because of, you know, the fact that we weren't able to give them the, um, the gut health, uh, what's the word I'm it, looking for? Give that time for them <clears throat> yeah. to develop and really have a chance to develop their gut. I think too, you know, when you think about if they're nursing, if they're nursing babies, you know, how much their mom is giving to them their mm. immune system, helping to build their gut and all that. And I know oftentimes our little rescue babies don't even have that chance. So it can be, um, yeah, I mean, that's all foundational stuff. And obviously we want to try from the very beginning to give our cats their best life. And there's so much more science coming out that really uh, affirms certain, you know, waiting a little bit longer for spay or neuter or not doing the combo shots all at once, uh, all that stuff. But the fact remains, like you well understand, that so many cats will develop this. And in a shelter environment, there's not a lot that can be done, right? I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. that there's there's some like reform that will happen someday somehow. But um, but right now, it's like you know you're taking in tons and tons of kittens. You're saving lives, and so in order to stop them from procreating, we have to, you know, we have to uh, fix them all. And then in order to stop them from um, getting disease or spreading disease throughout the shelter, we have to vaccinate them all. And those are like the only answers that they currently have in the majority of shelters. So, um, so it's, you know, it's not necessarily a, the shelter's fault, but I think that that's where we're getting so many gut imbalance issues in, in cats um, is, you know, starting from the beginning, but, and like you said, with it, not getting enough colostrum as a, as a baby from their mother is, you know, a, a deficit in, um, in a lot of these rescue kitties too. But, as, you know, it's like, once we notice those symptoms, once we realize, wow, they're vomiting a lot more than usual, or it really had a bad bout of diarrhea in there. And once you figure out, especially in a multi-cat household, which cat is having the issue, you're not mm -hmm. always going to see. Uh, and then, and then it's time to go to the vet. So you're, so you're already seeing symptoms and yes, you want to get those symptoms under control, but that's where it really is this, um, there is this other way, as you said, another path that you can start looking at and looking at bringing down the inflammation naturally, looking at, is there a food sensitivity that's going on? Kind of figuring out what it is that's really triggering this. Is it happening? When does this happen? You know, I think with, uh, with a lot of people, it's like, oh, well, we just had diarrhea a couple times and 
and I think I think they're okay. You know, it's like we want to we want to be as proactive as possible. You know, even before we start seeing symptoms, mm-hmm. we know this is such a, a epidemic, really, for so many kitties that that is why we really do advocate for building our cats' gut health. All of our cats, everyone is going to be, you know, not the perfect gut. So there are things that we can be doing that can help that can help uh, build the gut. Certainly when it's already been compromised and you're seeing symptoms, it is that uh, depending on the severity of it, we want to get the symptoms under control, but that's not where it stops. The diagnosis and the symptomatic care is the beginning of getting to the root of the issue. Yeah. And I mean, diet, you know, we, we always talk about, about diet, Jessica, but, but diet is like so important. It's, it's foundational in overall health. We know that as humans, the same goes for our cats. If we're feeding them a high inflammatory diet, of course, their gut's going to be inflamed. If we're feeding them ingredients like carbohydrates and starches and grains and all of these things that you find in the overwhelming majority of commercial pet foods, um, it is, it's, it's going to contribute to the problem, not be proactive in, in, in helping um, prevent the problem. So I actually found a blog post from Dr. Judy Morgan, who said, this is actually back in 2016, she wrote this. And she is saying that not only are the, there are two ingredients um, that are very commonly found in, in cat food that not just contribute to the problem, but she thinks can cause the problem of IBD, and that is wheat gluten and carrageenan. So yeah. she is saying absolutely, 100%, read the labels. If you find either of these two, put it back down, don't buy it. Mm-hmm. Have you yeah. found that true? Well, I mean, we, you know, we're not vets and we're, we're not able to like see, but a hundred percent. I mean, I, I didn't want to say cause the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but not well, that's, the problem. But, that's why I said but, Dr. Judy Morgan said it. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I 100%, I mean, you think about what those ingredients are and what, you know, I mean, both of them are are so unhealthy. Carrageenan is like a known carcinogen and it's in a, a, a huge amount of wet food um, that we feed our cats. And then wheat gluten is in almost every dry food, commercial uh, dry food that um, that we also feed our cats. And um, yes, and I mean, there are several other ingredients too that I would, that I would say probably also contribute to, yeah, contribute to the problem um, or cause the problem or can be a cause of the problem. Carrageenan is in a lot of our food as well. But I think when you look at, uh, we are our cat's only choice for food. Like there is a dip that I absolutely love. It is my favorite dip for vegetables ever. I can eat veggies all day long. It has carrageenan in it. I'm like, are you kidding? (laughs) <laughs> I'm not so, being healthy. I'm not being healthy, but I can make that choice, right? But for our cats, when we're feeding them, you know, we think, oh, let's let's move them over to a, a moisture-rich diet. That's so mm-hmm. important. Along with that comes, let's make sure that there's not carrageenan in that food because, or any number of other things. But you want, the, you know, you want to make the best choices for our cats. And when you think about just how um, most cats don't get any kind of variety in their diet at all. You find a food that your cats will eat and that's what they get. And that is it. And then you freak out when they stop eating that. Well, I think there is kind of that cumulative effect when their body is just like, I'm done with this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like this is absolute crap. Mm-hmm. When we first transitioned our cats, we had five cats at the time and our oldest cat transitioned to raw food in one week. It's like he knew his body it was the most beautiful thing. And I know everyone cautions people and says, you know, you want to take time, do it little by little. And we, it wasn't like we weren't paying attention to how he was handling it. He had great poops. It was, there was no vomiting, all of that. So obviously observation, but um, I do think that a species appropriate diet for cats is something that not a lot of people even realize what that is. And when you look at what those ingredients are and what those, uh, vitamins and minerals and the things that really are so good for them that their bodies are made to nutritionally and biologically need for various functions. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, wow, it's a lot simpler than you realize, but you realize also just how complicated we make the situation by having to really back up what is considered, you know, it's like Dr. Karen Becker says, why would you feed your cat anything other than cat food? Right. It's like <laughs> you get it in a bag at the market when you and and then you're starting to realize, wow, for cats, it is different. It's different than even it is for dogs. And, um, 
you know, we've talked about if we were going to go adopt a cockapoo or a, what's a cockapoo? A bird? I think so. Or is that a dog? Cock, no, it is a, it like is a, a cocker a, spaniel a, poodle mix. Is that what that is? Or a lizard or a rabbit or whatever. I would be getting a little book on what kind of bedding do they like? What kind of environment do they need? What is their diet? What do they need to be eating? We don't do that necessarily with our dogs and cats because it's already an established industry and there is any number of things for us to choose from. So, yeah. so you, so you really have to put in some work and do some research and find out, get in with the right crew, like f just figure out, you know, like, um, and, and I mean, employ a little bit of uh, common sense. Like, you know, it's when you think about a fresh food diet and I like, I like that people have switched it from a raw food diet to a fresh food diet. A lot of people just like, it resonates better with, with certain people who have never even, scary. it doesn't sound as scary. Right. Um, and, and, it, and it lumps in, you know, gently cooked as well as, as well as raw, um, foods. But, um, but even if you're feeding, like going back to what you just said, even if you're feeding the crappiest of foods and that's all that you can afford, diversifying that diet shows in research, in science shows that diversifying proteins in your diet, diversifying ingredients in your diet builds that gut microbiome, which is going to help prevent IBD in, in our kitties, right? Um, so diversifying the diet is also very important. And if you can do it with a fresh food diet, all the better. So if you could, I think, let's quickly sum up preventative measures. And then I want to get into once you get this di diagnosis of IBD or this cluster of symptoms, what, where do we go from there? Can you kind of like give me the pre prevention for dummy? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, prevention is basically what we've been saying, right? So prevention mm -hmm. for dummies would be Die. let's, let's, you know, let's get them on the best low and anti or a, a low inflammatory diet, right? So an anti-inflammatory diet as, as, as much as possible, let's diversify proteins. Let's add in some supplementation, um, digestive enzymes, probiotics, and, and omega-3 fatty acids are all great for inflammation and overall gut health. And those three simple, um, supplements on a regular basis help to prevent a lot of things. So um, adding in just that and feeding the best diet that you can afford. Um, and uh, in a variety and, of diet too. Yeah. I think variety is one of those things that we really ignore when it comes to cats. So as far as prevention goes, not just because there's a can shortage or a, a supply chain issue going on, it's I think it is a great practice for all of us to find a couple different brands that we do investigate, that we call them even and ask them where they source, what, whatever it is, and 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 rotate those through, you know, like get our cats used to a little bit of variety. And if we need to employ some trickery by, you know, sprinkling a little, you know, freeze-dried treat on top or, or kibble on or top, kibble on top, whatever it may be, then then uh then that's what we need to do for whatever time we need to do that. But variety, I think, is in a good diet is helpful, not just for their gut, but also if the option that your cat only eats uh, is unavailable, which is something that we've had a lot of people reaching out <laughs> right, to us about right, right. in the past year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So true. So, so true. And uh, like all of my cats right now are just so, so finicky. <laughs> I had um, one of my cats, Riley, I had to move them from their space because they have a big giant room um, because my husband is allergic. I had to move them in the house into another room back in February because we had a bad freeze and the I had two heaters going out there and it couldn't keep up. So I had to bring them inside for a couple of days and Riley, it was very disruptive for Riley. He had, he got constipated, um, which I cleared up overnight with like coconut oil and pumpkin, no, you know, no big deal, but he became very, very finicky with what he would eat. And I had to, over the course of a couple of days, resort to some not so great food to get him to eat. And ever, like literally since February, I've been battling with trying to get them back on a healthier food because once he was eating the junk food, everybody else was trying to take that food away from him. So I had to give them, you know, how it goes. With yes. Well, understanding the industry though, too, a little bit. I mean, you think about how the, the business of palatins 
is multi-million dollars. It, when we have cats that have never eaten kibble in their entire life, but we'll get a bag of it as a prop. If that bag opens, you would think we had some cracked out cats. I mean, they are climbing all over us. It is so hard to make videos, Jessica, when you were like <laughs> using the props. You're trying, you're like pouring them down. Mix. You this. just need like, I just need to be able to put this on the floor and I need you to film me putting this on the floor or pouring out the kibble. And then they just come running. They're like, I smell that animal it digest. Is. Like, it's like they're, they're, and we're like, no, no, like it is, it's, it's, it's more it's difficult. Than <laughs> it's a great reminder though, of just how cats can be so difficult to, you know, especially once they've had a taste kibble addicts that, that, Kibble attic thing is a, is a real thing. So uh, it is understanding the challenges that pet parents have when it comes to switching over to a better diet. I mean, I think that it's so important to, to be compassionate about that. It's not just as simple as saying, hey, go get a bag of this mm -hmm. or try that or right. a can of that. And that's what your cat should be eating. No, it is. No, it is much more difficult. Oh, and sure. The when industry is, is very good at making our cats uh, literally crazy. They, yeah. They've done all, the, they've done all the research on how to make our cats, how to make cats addicted to their foods. So it's, you know, it, it, it's, we have that against us when we're trying to transition, but like, like Adrian said, you, you know, you have to be easy on yourself and you have to allow the time for your kitties to, as she said, our oldest at the time transitioned in one week, our youngest at the time took six months. So it was a, an ongoing thing to get him slowly onto a better food because he was a kibble addict. So, yeah. um, so yeah, you just have to, you know, go at your cat's pace, but, but be patient and persevere. To, yeah. Just to put a pin in the, in like prevention for dummies for IBD or IBS, I do think it is that, you know, a variety of foods, good quality foods, looking for those uh, red flag ingredients, supplementing with things that are that are uh, support the gut, gut health, all of that, the whole digestive system, also um, awesome. But I'll also say, I know that can seem challenging. And if you're not seeing symptoms, so many of our cat parents, they're like, wow, we don't really need to do this. You know, not yet. It, it, this is taking too much time or energy. Or money. I do think though that, um, you know, what do they say? Prevention is worth a pound of cure. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's so true because when we take that time on the front end of things to really try to do what's best, what we, what we, what we can truly identify as what's best for our cats as a species, what they need biologically, then down the line, we are going to be saving. really, really saving, not just money, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, Grief. heartache yeah. Yeah, as well. And pain. Yeah. I'm one of those people that, I tend to implement with my dog first and then the light bulb goes on that I should be doing this with my cats. And um, I recently talked to uh, Krista and Jeff from Pug and Hound and I asked them, I said, you know, I had some issues with my dog. We, we had to switch foods at one point a few years ago and the light bulb, bulb went off for me that I need to give her raw goat's milk. So that has been a staple in her diet ever since. And they were like, oh my God, this is like, if people can feel like they can't do anything else, if they're still feeding a kibble, feed, like add raw goat's milk to yep. it. And I, I think that I, I've recently been doing this with my cats, giving them the option, not all of them want to drink the raw goat's milk, but a couple of them do. And it's every day I give them that option in the morning with their breakfast to have some raw goat's milk. And, um, it is just, I think one of the biggest things we can do for our pets. If we feel like we just, it's too overwhelming. We can't get to anything else. I, I just wanted to interject that like, Oh, I have dust. Um, like how beneficial something as simple as raw goat's milk is. And we, most people I think in the U S are going to have access to it through an independent pet store at this point. Yeah. Um, there are still a few it, states. We are one of them yeah. that will not allow the, <laughs> the, the sale of uh, raw goat's milk, uh, which is ridiculous because marijuana is legal as a recreational, like whatever, and like it's, prostitution, no, you know, like, milk. but not, it's not in Las Vegas, right. not raw goat's milk for pets. Um, however, it is true. I mean, it's full of those probiotics, prebiotics, and it has so many, you know, gut, um, 
gut supporting. support benefits, right? Um, to, to just that. And most cats do like it. Most cats will, you know, lap it up. So yeah, I think that's a great advice. Absolutely. Yeah. So somebody has, their cat has one or more or all of these symptoms and they've likely been to the vet multiple times and maybe their veterinarian has told them, okay, I, you know, I think we're dealing with IBD whether they do or do not go through any of the testing procedures, which I think, Jay, you know, you said it well early on that there is a huge overlap in symptoms of IBD and symptoms of cancer um, anywhere in the, in, you know, GI system. So I am a proponent of testing to a degree. Mm. Um, you know, if if you're one of those people that you're very steadfast with on, you know, you're on the allopathic track and you're like, okay, I'm metronidazole and prednisolone and all the things they're going to treat IBD and GI cancer the same way. I, I know every veterinarian I have talked to there it's metronidazole and prednisolone. It doesn't matter if it's IBD or if it's, if it's cancer, they're going to do the same thing. So a lot of veterinarians that I have dealt with in my life are like, I, there's no point in spending the money on the testing. We're going to treat it the same way. But as you were saying, there could be a lot of benefit in the testing because you you really need to know what you're dealing with. Because if it is cancer, then you may want to do something totally different with your cat. But that said, if it is IBD or you feel like it's IBD or your vet feels like it's IBD, there are things we can do that will help and not harm. Whereas a lot of our pharmaceuticals, they may help initially, but they're also going to harm right. in the long run. And I know you guys have a line of products, Feline Essentials, which everybody I know raves about. I use them. I mean, everybody I know uses them. They're incredible. They're very, um, they're natural. And you recently, I think it's been almost a year, close to a year, right? Or no, 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 no. I'm totally wrong on that. It hasn't been a year, but you recently came out with <laughs> an IBD kit for cats. What is Can time? you tell me about that? I know. What is time? <laughs> what is time anymore? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so basically first, before I get into the treatments and I want to say that there's, there's basically in my, what I tell people and I'm not a veterinarian, but what I tell people there's, is there in the easy way, there's basically two ways to go, um, to successfully treat IBD in cats and these and and all the clusters of, of symptoms, uh, and that's one the slow way and one a fast way, right? But before we get to that, I want to say that the treatment of uh, metronidazole um, is normally a, a quick treatment to stop the diarrhea. So the veterinarian is giving it, it, as a as a um, what's uh, I don't know what my words are, but um, they they need to stop dehydration and they need to stop the diarrhea. And that is very important. There is another product out there called Diagel, D-I-A-G-E-L. And it's called like a one and done. And it's an all natural um, formula that you can give in replace instead of metronidazole. If what we're doing is we just need to stop the diarrhea and the vomiting, we need to make sure that our, our cats are, you know, not getting dehydrated and wasting away then that is a, that's a good, um, uh, alternative, alternative especially for cats that have developed my, uh, a resistance to metronidazole. So a lot of people are like, it's just not working anymore. It's just not working. Uh, so, so that is a great way to really stop that kind of, uh, critical symptom. Mm -hmm. Keep your cat from becoming dehydrated. Let them absorb their food. That is a great, yeah. great point. That yeah. Job. yeah. Um, so when it comes to treatment for IBD, we do have an IBD and gut restore kit, um, that we put together because all of the different supplements help a different area of the gut. Um, and together we have found that, um, th this is a way in which cat parents can successfully slowly, but successfully um, treat IBD in cats. I know I'm not supposed to use the word treat, but help IBD in cats. Um, 
alleviate, right? So we can help to, to restore the gut. And this is through supplementation, right? And diet, of course, we don't want to continue to feed an inflammatory diet and then try to supplement. You can out supplement a diet, right? So, um, so we still want to get them on a good diet, but, um, using a, um, a, a, various supplementation over time, we're starting to restore that gut. So we can do that now, depending on the severity of the issue, this can take, you know, a month to a year, depending on, you know, the, the, severity. the severity of the, um, of the gut health. Um, if it's really, really bad and that gut is like thin and we're, we've got leaky gut going on, then it can take longer to, uh, to really restore that gut. The second way, however, is microbiome restorative therapy. And we have been, we have been interviewing and talking to so many people and so many veterinarians that are uh, just passionate about this, you know, fecal transplant. It sounds gross. It sounds weird. It is kind of weird. Um, but it's been around and all the science shows that it is the fastest way to restore your uh, cat's gut health. And that's through a tree, a, a, a fecal transplant. And the, the, you can do this through animalbiome.com um, and they, you know, they do the testing and things like that. And then they give you pills and you pill your cats. Um, and we're actually going through that process right now with them, um, with all of our cats so that we can just, you know, be the best proactive cat parents that we can see and see how, see how the whole process works. Um, but then there's also, um, Dr. Margot Roman is a beautiful veterinarian and she, um, is a proponent for ozone therapy and microbiome restorative therapy, which is the actual tr like colonic, um, transplant of fecal matter from a healthy cat, meaning a cat that hasn't been on antibiotics and vaccinated and all the things that you're probably your shelter cat has. Um, and we're going to, we're going to basically not really replace, but we're going to restore that gut through a fairly simple process with the right veterinarian, but there's a little bit of education that goes into it. Um, and it's, you know, I, I think it's a roundabout going to be the same cost over time to, to restore it the slow way that makes more sense to us as humans versus the fast way. That's like, what you're going to, you're going to feed my cat poop. What, you know, <laughs> are you going to stick somebody else's cat's poop up my cat's butt? What? Very graphic. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's, it seems weird, but, um, we have Dr. Margot Roman has talked at numerous amounts of times about how it has in one session often reversed IBD in cats through just one fecal transplant. So, um, so those are basically the two, the two routes to go depending on your. Well, and I do level. think too, that even if you go that fast route, it still means being oh, yeah. proactive yes. moving forward. You've still got to really get that good diet going, the yes. variety going, yes. that supplementation that kind of helps keep all the good uh, bacteria and all, all the good stuff. That's, you know? that's a fantastic point. Cause we talked to the, to the, uh, people from animal biome and they said, you know, they're, they're all, they do tons of research, tons of research and all the research is showing that, you know, this is like the best thing ever, but then the dogs and cats are going back to a kibble diet after, you know, after they've gone through and restored that, then they're going back to harming it again. So they're taking like all these steps forward and then turning around and taking all these steps back. And it's like, um, you know, we still have to get into the mindset. So that's why it might even be easier um, to go the, the route of supplementation and good diet, because now you're creating a lifestyle. It's not just going to help and, and resolve the, the gut issues, but it's going to help and resolve all other or many other issues in your cats and help them live a longer life anyway, because we're getting into that lifestyle change, not just a quick fix. So yeah, good point. I'm so glad you brought up animal biome. Um, I intent told myself I wasn't going to bring it up today because I wanted to talk about the the product that, that y'all have, but I have actually been giving uh, one of my cats, the FMT capsules from them. And I'm, I'm going to start, with a second cat. Um, I, I just think what they're doing is incredible. And I, after I interviewed Dr. Odette Suter, I was like all on, right? Like I, she, she's like, stop with the probiotics, just do this. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's true. Well, I think it's a good point too. I love that you wanted to talk about our products, but 
I do think, you know, we just did a podcast about taking care of Pooh Bear, but it does take a village. Mm -hmm. And I think what's beautiful is that there are so many resources out there and it is about what steps you're ready to take. Yeah. And uh, just the fact that there is so much, you know, we do have a, an awesome probiotic in our uh, IBD, uh, our gut restore kit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're not going to say, hey, it's not a bad idea to bring variety to probiotics. There's billions of strains of bacteria that are beneficial. And we ourselves and, right. use more than just our probiotic in right. our cat's food. So there are so many things that we can be doing. And I think the fact that there are so many options out there, it is, it can seem overwhelming, but it is like Dr. Katie Woodley says, when you realize that you're dealing with something, once you have a diagnosis, that's not the end of the road. It's the beginning of finding the right path forward and just taking little steps as you go to, to not just restore your cat's gut, but to give them the best chance at, at, at a better life, you know? Yep. Yeah. So what is in your kit, the gut restore kit and why is it there? Okay. So we just talked about the probiotic and, and I think everybody now knows what, um, how helpful a probiotic is to overall gut health. Right. Um, and that's our newest product. Um, we have our, um, digestive, our catalyst, which is a, a mixture of digestive and antioxidant enzymes. And what I like so much about this, um, product and why we use it every single day. And I take it myself every single day is because it is, um, it's not just, it's restoring the digestive enzymes in the body. It's helping, you know, to break down the food, but the, those antioxidant enzymes, the superoxide dismutase is an anti-inflammatory an antioxidant, right? So it's killing free radicals, which helps the joints and all the other things. Um, but it's also, you know, the inflammation of the, of the gut is, is, this is a, addressing that directly, as well as the pancreas and all the other organs that are also affected whenever the gut is in and not in balance, right? Um, then we have our OxyCat, and our OxyCat is our most versatile product, but it's an alkaline based, it's an antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, alkaline based remedy um, that goes in and balances out the pH in the gut. And I think, you know, a lot of people, um, it's, it's one of those things that you don't see a lot, but we've been using it for 17, 18 years, um, on ourselves and all of our cats. Um, and it's, it's quite amazing, um, what it can do just to help to balance out that pH and fight any secondary infections that are brewing in there as well while keeping, and it works at a cellular level. So it, it's also keeping all the good bacteria still in the gut, right? So it's not, it's not canceling it out by being an antibacterial. Yeah, I would say just from personal experience, it's excellent when it comes to helping with uh, diarrhea and uh, bubble guts, you know, just that gas. pain when you have painful gas. I know mm -hmm. one of our, one of our dear Mr. Biddles, may he rest in peace, he would get bubble guts, uh, guts every now and then. Uh, so it really helps that as, as well as acid. That sounded guts. like you just farted. You said it helps. <laughs> But that was on the podcast. That was not a no, it, no, but it's a, it's an alkaline based remedy, so it counteracts the acid in the right. GI tract, so right? Great. So, so it's so it's great for that. Um, and then our B twelve. So all of the research is showing that cats with IBD have a have a, and maybe not every cat, but the overwhelming majority of cats, the cats that they've studied, have a B twelve deficiency, and the B and so the B twelve is also one of our newer products. We came out with that last year. Um, and, um, so we added that B12, we were waiting for the B12 and the probiotic to be launched so that we could put together this IBD gut restore kit, because we were doing so much research and finding out what all needs to be, what all needs to be addressed when it comes to a cat with IBD. And, um, and these, this little packet of these four supplements are phenomenal, especially in conjunction with each other. When you have any kind of, um, gut, uh, gut flare up, it's good just for general health. I mean, we give yeah. these the, the whole kit to our, to our cats, especially our older cats every single day anyway. So it's fine if your cat doesn't have IBD, but, um, but it is, it's, it's a great, it, we've, we've really, we did put a lot of thought process into putting together the kit. Well, and I do want to, uh, a couple more props for the B12. It's a, it's the natural B12. It's water soluble. It's an, it's literally a liquid. So, you know, we went through B12 shots with our Mr. Biddles for anemia, which can also be a symptom of, yep. of uh, IBD. IBD as well. Um, and so it helps restore those red blood cells and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, especially for IBD kitties, when we're dealing, when they get to that picky eating part, it can really help stimulate their appetite yes. and help give them a little more energy. So, you know, so many people use it for 
so many other reasons and just for natural or for maintenance health, you know, but uh, those are some big things as well for IBD specific kitties that can be so helpful. And I love as the person that had to give B12 shots to our Mr. Vittles, I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to have it in liquid form that and it's all taste, your cats it's tasteless. It. Like it is, we have had, I think it tastes sweet. We have, I, like. I know, but we have had from cats, we've had zero complaints because they don't have a ta- the sweet sensor or the sweet they don't taste, have but, taste but, yeah. Um, so, but we put it directly on top of our cats. We don't even food. mix it in. We don't even mix it in. Like we just like fi- get all their food. We mix everything else in and then we put the B12 directly on top and they just lap it up because it doesn't have that that flavor and it is non-synthetic. So it's, it's um, also water soluble. So if the cat, you know, if it doesn't need it, it's flushed out through the urine. So um, but for, with cats with for, IBD, that the absorption of B12 is compromised mm-hmm. most often. So we want to be giving them uh, their best chance at having everything that they need yeah. to restore. Awesome. Well, I think this is a huge it's a huge deal for cat parents. And, um, I actually had a, here's, so here's my surprise (laughs) that I I was saving till the end. Um, I had a lady reach out to me. She watched one of my YouTube videos and sent me an email and she was having trouble with one of her cats. She had two cats and she thought, but she wasn't sure she was still in the process with her veterinarian that her, she thought her cat might have IBD and she wanted to know, like we got on a, I got on the phone call with her and I kind of went through everything we just went through with like your vet, your, your vet has done this, 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 and still nothing. And she's like, oh my God, that's exactly what I've been going through with my cat. And she said, my husband is on, this is it for him because she was the cat was having diarrhea a lot and she wasn't always making it into the box. And she was like, my husband's done. He's like, if we can't get this resolved, the cat's got to go. First of all, that made me so, so sad because why would you do that? But you know, I, I, this is the reality for people. So, um, I initially sent her to animal biome and I said, well, you really need to know what's going on and I could give you a million different things to do. Um, but if you go to animal biome, you're going to find out exactly what's going on specifically with your cat and what to do with your cat. And literally the next day y'all came out with the IBD kit. So I called her back and I said, look, I, if you don't want to wait around for the test results, I get it. I have not tried this kit, but I have tried parts of this kit and I trust this company uh, and I, I know these ladies, this is, this is great. Do this. And, uh, we also talked about diet and all the things. So I emailed her back a couple weeks later and she, this is her reply. She said, hello, Jessica. I came across one of your YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the beginning. I, I had this all down in one place. Anyway, she, the, the reply was, let me tell you. Uh, Leia is doing way better. I got Leia the IBD gut kit from two crazy cat ladies, followed it to a T and she's about 95% better. I now have both Leanne, which was her other cat and my other cat on the smalls cat food and they're doing great. Leah has even lost weight. She isn't as bloated looking and seems to be in a better mood. I can't thank you enough for your recommendation. So I have been holding on to that to tell you guys um, so she did everything. She got him on a better diet. She tried your kit and now they're doing great. <laughs> yeah. wow. So happy. That's like, that, that's the, that is the best gift ever. Thank you for sharing that. That, that, that I could cry like that, that I'm getting super close myself. Yeah, that's, is... that's the whole, that's the whole reason though. I think exactly what she went through that feeling of, I don't know what to do. Um, the fact that you are here to be able to say, well, here's something that you can try that we're all part of this community that is really trying to find out what's, what, just give, how to help our babies, yeah, right? How to give pet that parents is hope, just right? so amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you for saying I know. That. I was so happy when she, she emailed me that because I've been there. I've been in that exact situation. Um, I told you earlier, I had two cats that I went through this with and my second cat that I, I went through it with, he, his diarrhea was 
everywhere. Like I literally had the entire room lined with puppy pads because there was diarrhea everywhere all the time. And, you know, my husband being not a cat person, he's like, why are you putting up with this? And I'm like, what else am I supposed to, like, I am responsible for caring for this little creature. And what do you, what do you expect me to do? Right. <laughs> like at What's the it? time, this was years ago. I'm like, I, I'm doing the, the best I know how to do. And of course, at the time it was the, you know, prednisolone and the, and, and the different things, but I, I'm, yeah, it was just, I, I can't put, I can't wrap my mind around the, I can't put up with this anymore. You know what I mean? Like we all have those breakdowns. Believe me, I have had my share of like just sitting in the floor crying. I don't know what to do moments. <laughs> um, we've all been there, but there is zero chance that I could just like give up. Yeah. No. And I feel yeah. yeah most pet parents are, are feeling the same way. Yes. And they need some hope. And I think that that's, you know, when Jay said, you said earlier, like find the right crew. I think by that she's, I think I'm going to piggyback on top of that and just say how important it is to um, have tools in our cat care toolkit, you know, yeah. to really, uh, and proactively, I think one of our, one of our biggest learning experiences as young cat parents was not really doing nothing until there was an emergency. Yeah. And that was like, how, where did this come from? How could we have avoided this? Yeah. So and I'll be very honest with you. Our cat with IBD mama, when she was, um, we had no idea who was having, I mean, the most horrendous smelling diarrhea. Pools of it. It like and, and just and puddles and and not inside the box. It was always. I mean, we had a. Mm. She ruined a ton of carpet in our house, and it was. But we had no idea which one of our cats because she would never do it. You know, their we cat. They're caught. not going to do it. Like when we're right there. Um. So what we did was we put like some color, uh, food coloring. Um. And you can get natural food coloring at that time. We didn't know better. We didn't really put. We just put whatever food coloring I had. I put it in their wet food in the morning. And I, and I made a little chart and it was like, scotch gets blue, mama gets red, you know, this cat gets this and this cat, you know, so, so that when we saw the diarrhea, if there was food coloring in it, then we would know which cat that needs, needs to go to the vet. And it, it turned out that it was red, it was mama. And so, um, so we took her to the vet and we, we were able to get it under control with diet and supplementation. Now we didn't switch her to a fresh food diet. We switched her to, I think at the time it was just a better kibble, right? Um, even predominantly. and predominantly they were getting wet food treats. Yeah. The they were getting wet food in like morning and afternoon. We were like those cat parents feeding them wet food in the morning and the afternoon with supplements in them and, um, and then dry food in the, in the afternoon. Um, but, uh, but we were just with supplementation, we were able to get it under control um, and, you know, upgrading. We had already upgraded, upgraded their food a little bit as far as their, the yeah. quality of their wet food and dry food. Yeah. But I, I want to, I want to say as well, I mean, I think exactly like that email that you just read to us is so powerful. And I think that, you know, it, it just affirms going down this path, like realizing that there is hope, you know, it, it seems like it can be exhausting, but mm -hmm. when you start, when you can really start seeing results and when you're able to accumulate kind of the village of your trusted resources, you know, it's like, well, there are so many amazing integrated veterinarians out there now as well. Like that would be another thing that I would recommend is if you have access to a telehealth consult with uh, an integrated vet, because there are other things. I mean, I, I'm thinking about Julianne Thorne, like different herbs and different oh, yeah, Chinese medicine. And there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's lots of stuff, but, but I think, you know, it is that every cat is a little bit different. And so it is, um, there are some foundational things that we know can really help calm the gut and, and, and restore it. And then there are, there are, like, it's, it's just a never ending journey. So yeah. there are so many resources out there. And I think it's just such a beautiful, um, community community. Yeah. All right. I told you that this episode was going to be just jam packed of incredible information specific to IBD, which is, oh, goodness gracious. I, again, my cat Machida is dealing with this right now. He's not feeling well today. So it was like 
really heavy on my heart. And I said, let's go ahead and get this episode out. And I want you to know that wherever you're watching or listening to this, I will put a link to that IBD kit from the two crazy cat ladies um, in the, the notes, whether it's like the description of the video or the show notes on the podcast, wherever it is that you're watching or listening to this, because I cannot tell you how huge it is that that this set of supplements, all natural supplements from Feline Essentials can be so beneficial in helping our pets. Yes, I absolutely would use this with, I, I might change out the probiotic for the, for a dog, but outside of that, everything else in this kit would be perfect for a dog as well. Um, if you have questions about that, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help you with that. Yeah. So this was an incredible episode. Thank you so much for re-listening. If you've heard it before, I know sometimes even when we hear things, it's like we kind of forget. It's been a long time. It can be really important to go back and listen to things. But if you haven't heard this before, I know the information was just like mind blowing for you. So with that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening or watching wherever you're listening or watching. Please make sure to give this um, a thumbs up or a review where, on, the, on the podcast app you're listening to. I would really very much appreciate that. That's the best way to get this information out to new people. And with that, I will talk to you guys with a brand new guest episode next week. <laughs>